Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapnil Bhartia, and my next guest is Alexis Ahmed, founder of Hacker Exploit. Alexis, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, let's get started with some basics. Tell me a bit about the, the company Hacker Exploit. What is it all about? Uh, right. So, Hacker Exploit is a cybersecurity company that specializes in offering companies penetration testing services for networks, um, web applications, cloud environments, and that we also offer red teaming services. Um, so that's one aspect of our services or our service portfolio. We also offer blue team services for companies. So, uh, you know, we provide training to their blue team uh, in regards to dealing with offensive, uh, with, with actual attackers or various scenarios. Uh, and this is where we sort of get into our training. So uh, in terms of our training, we offer free and paid training. And our free training is available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And uh, our paid training, we usually offer to companies. Uh, so we offer companies cybersecurity awareness training, uh, blue team training, as well as some red team training. So yeah, that's uh, what we specialize in. Since you're the founder of the company, I would also love to know a bit about your own background, uh, how you got involved with cybersecurity, and what are the things that you are personally either specializing or interested in? I first got started in cybersecurity when I was a Linux administrator. Uh, so uh, on one particular assignment, I was supposed to set up and secure uh, a set of Linux servers for an organization. And that was sort of my first uh, introduction or my first foray into security. And uh, so after that, I started getting experience with cybersecurity. So I started uh, taking on uh, various cybersecurity certifications as well as, uh, you know, joined a lot of forums and starting getting, uh, you know, started to get my hands dirty. Uh, once I got, uh, you know, a basic foundation in cybersecurity, I essentially switched careers from a system administrator to a junior penetration tester for a company. Uh, when I was a junior penetration tester for the company, I uh, essentially was shadowing, you know, senior penetration testers and, uh, you know, various cybersecurity professionals who had a lot of experience and I learned a lot from that. So um, I you know, later was promoted to the senior penetration tester role uh, where I worked for about two years. And then I finally left to start Hackersploit because I realized there was a few, uh, you know, there were a few issues with the cybersecurity industry and the way it was handling, uh, you know, awareness and training for uh, engineers, system administrators, so on and so forth. Can you talk about your partnership with Linode? In what capacity are you working with them? So our partnership with Linode is primarily based uh, or primarily focused on training, where we offer the, their customers and their users a training on various topics uh, that involve uh, the deployment of Linux servers, uh, the, the deployment of web applications and server stacks. So for example, we, uh, we have partnered with them to essentially help their own users secure the, their systems when they set them up uh, and you know, to help them prevent, uh, prevent any of their organization, uh, organization's assets or applications from compromise. Can you talk about uh, some of the webcast series that you ran with Linode? I am aware of one which is securing, securing commonly used apps. Uh, so talk about uh, the, the, these series. So uh, we started off with uh, with one well, with the series last year that was focused on Linux server security. So we essentially took a user through the process of setting up a server, securing it from the ground up uh, so that they can host whatever web applications uh, they want to host. And of course, that played into our next series, which was, uh, again, as you mentioned, securing web apps and databases or securing commonly used apps, as it were, where we essentially uh, cover the process of securing stacks like uh, Apache, the Apache web server, Nginx, uh, MySQL, as well as uh, you know, performing various other, uh, various other security configurations on servers. So we're essentially trying to build up the, the actual secure, the security awareness of their users and, uh, and their customers so that whenever they deploy a server, they have the resources to secure it. Since you work closely with Linode and I'm sure they might, may have shared some insights with you as well, what are some of the common patterns that they or you have seen which users, uh, it could be either their mistake because when you look at security, there are two things that happen. One is bugs. There's nothing you can do with the bugs. You know, bugs lead to security issues. Second is misconfigurations. So what have you seen there with Linode users? What kind of mistakes they made and how these uh, training will help them? 
Uh, right. So one of the biggest issues that we have seen so far is, uh, you know, Linux servers getting compromised through, uh, you know, basic misconfigurations, uh, primarily through the remote access protocols like SSH. So, you know, you have lots of users who spin up servers and uh, they only use password, uh, you know, uh, password security. And, uh, you know, their SSH server can be brute forced by attackers if they use extremely simple passwords. Uh, the second thing that we see is that whenever users or customers are deploying, uh, you know, application stacks like Nginx or Apache, uh, they, they use the default configuration, which uh, again, the default configuration is really not that secure. So what happens is attackers can usually get more information from the particular stack uh, because the application has not been configured correctly. So we are primarily dealing with a, a real lack of understanding of the security threats that, uh, that you know, the individual or the company will face when they set up a server. And secondly, the issue is, you know, really pertains to the fact uh, that they use software uh, with the default configuration instead of configuring it and hardening it. So far, we have been talking mostly about the LAM mistake. We have been talking Apache and Nginx and all those things. But does this cover only these? Because if you look at Linode, they also offer more than LAM stack. They also offer AIML. They also offer containers. They also offer Kubernetes. So do you cover those as well? Yes, uh, we do. In fact, uh, we're actually moving on to the, uh, the, the actual process of securing Docker as a platform. Um, so the reason we started off with the LAMP stack is because that is the most commonly deployed stack. Um, so once we have that covered, we're now moving to some of the other applications that Linode, uh, th that Linode actually has on their platform. Uh, and the next one, of course, is Docker. So we'll be going through the process of securing uh, Docker as a platform. So we'll take a look at securing the Docker daemon, how to secure Docker containers at runtime, et cetera, et cetera. Excellent. If you look at a security in general, as we were talking about earlier, and you'll alluded to some other points, uh, there are two aspects. One is social or people, and second is technological. We have seen a lot of cultural changes that are happening in this space. Uh, DevSecOps is there. We talk about shift left. We talk about uh, uh, zero trust. In context of Linode's users, what kind of patterns you are seeing uh, where, you know, you already mentioned, you know, misc configuration is there, but how do you see things are changing as new, not only new use cases are coming to Linode, a lot of com people are now using AIML, but also new kind of workloads and new technologies are also coming there. Um, right, so uh, again, uh, we have seen a lot of change, as you mentioned, uh, with the adoption of new technologies. And we are sort of seeing the same pattern from the older days where whenever there's a new technology, there's a huge rush to jump into the technology and to start using it and deploying it. But the big mistake that we're actually seeing is that instead of focusing on the security aspect as, as it is quite important, uh, there's a, a lot of focus on, uh, on actual deployment uh, of the technology as opposed to uh, sitting down and taking a look at the risks that are, uh, th that are going to be, uh, that are going to affect the company or the organization that's using the technology. So that's why we wanted to come up with this set of series to actually ensure that uh, the users and customers have uh, you know, the documentation and the resources available to them when they do deploy these technologies. So uh, we're trying to change that trend. So we're trying to get people to start focusing on actually taking security seriously whenever they deploy a technology. But more thing that is happening is, uh, as we were talking about new technologies, since the landscape is changing so fast, uh, and uh, roles are also changing. In the early days, as you're talking, there were silos, you know, security was someone else's problem. Today, <laughs> it is your problem. Security is moving into developer's pipeline. Uh, which also means that developers not only have to worry about, you know, all those things that they do, but they also have to worry about security, which also means they have to stay update with uh, whatever is going on. So can you tell me how you are working with Linode to kind of keeping developers up to date either through new courses or whatever educational program that you're planning to run with Linode? Right. So uh, again, the way we, we, we are trying to do it is to introduce the, the the idea of security awareness as you already mentioned so uh, with with developers or in regards to developers you know this is an additional role or responsibility that they have to cater for and with, with that being the case we have to introduce security knowing or you know with, with the idea that they don't have any practical experience with security so we have to start at a very basic level introducing security concepts 
Uh, we then move on to, uh, you know, essentially explaining the process of working with a security policy and implementing one so that uh, things become easy as they move along and they can, again, implement security in every project that they actually get into. Uh, so what we've been doing is we're focusing and we're introducing security concepts to them in addition to the techniques we already did demonstrate. And, uh, sec and uh, thirdly, we are also working on, um, on introducing them to, uh, to actually gathering intelligence regarding their particular, particular technology they're using. So when I talk about intelligence, what I'm really uh, referring to here is staying up to date with the latest that's happening with that particular technology that they're using, uh, you know, becoming aware of vulnerabilities and, uh, and, and you know, the various uh, threats associated with the technology given its rapid uh, deployment or its, uh, you know, increasing uh, use cases. Uh, so that's how we're, we're primarily focused on, on, on working. Alexis, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, talk about not only the work that you are doing with Linode, but uh, the security landscape in general. Uh, thank you for your time today and I look forward to talk to you again at some point. Thank you very much for having me on. It's uh, It's been a pleasure and uh, look forward to talking to you again.